as usual, I think you've probably picked a nice, I picked a hard question for you to do, and now you need me to do the hard question and see if I can actually do this. No. So this is me doing it as though I were you, you guys doing this. Okay, I'm just gonna shut the door actually. So we've got these two spheres, um, and we don't know where they, where they actually are according to these two walls, but we've got wall one and wall two. Let's take this down a notch. Um, and they have a particular ratio. Yeah, so that ratio we're going to use as a, we can take them as fractions instead, and we can say that the distance is like a third D and two thirds D, something like that. So two spheres A and B sit on a smooth horizontal plane at a point P between two parallel vertical walls, W1 and W2, so that the ratio of WP, W1P to PW2 so is two to one. So this distance and this distance, this is a ratio of two to one, which means that this one is two thirds times some distance, and this is one third times some other distance, okay? We then get told that A is projected towards wall one, so I'm guessing this one is A and this one is B. A is gonna be projected this way, B is gonna be projected this way with speed two, and this one has speed three. Now I'm actually just going to pause there for a second and I'm actually just going to work out some of the times that they're going to be travelling. So I'm going to say, let's call this one for the time for A to get to wall 1. So time for A to wall 1. I'm going to call that one T1. Don't know why not. And from our distance, speed, time, we know that time is distance over speed. So we've got the distance is 2 thirds d, and the speed is 2, so you get 1 third d is the amount of time that it takes to get to the wall. I'm also going to work out the time for b to get to wall 2. In other words, the time for this one to go to this side of it. Now, we, I'm going to call that one t2, just because I'm going to have a lot of different times here. And that is the distance, which is a third d, and we're going to divide it by its speed, which is 3. What's a third divided by 3? A ninth. a ninth. So we now get a ninth D for the amount of time that this one is taking. Then it gets to the second part of the question. So, so far here, we've only really just tested it. We've only just read that part of the question. There's quite a bit more to come. The spheres rebound off their respective walls before colliding at the point Q. Given that the coefficient of restitution between both walls and spheres is 0 0.6, calculate the ratio of the distances for where they collide again. So I'm now going to extend my wall diagram down like this. First of all, we've worked out how long it took for B to get to the wall and how long it took for A to get to the wall. Do they get to the wall at the same time? No. 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 So I'm not going to draw them at the same time because that might be a bit misleading. What I'm going to do is I'm going to now work out, let's say that they crash somewhere over here and call this Q. I'm going to work out how long it takes for B to get to the wall, and I'll work out how long it takes for A to get to the wall. So we're going to do time for A to, uh, to go from the wall to Q. And I'm going to call this T3. We don't know the distance that it's traveling, so I'm gonna call it x, but we need to find out what its speed is. Well, it came in with two, so what will it be coming out of? Good, because two times e is two times 0 0.6, which is 1.2. So it's gonna be dividing it by 1.2. One divided by 1.2 is 5 sixths, I think. So it's 5 sixths x, okay? I'm now going to do the time for b to go from wall 2 to q. This is the part that's going to be interesting. This distance was x. What's this distance? d minus x, okay? So we can say that time 4 is going to be d minus x divided by its speed. Well, it came in at 3. So what will it be bouncing back at? 
1.8. So we're going to do that divided by 1.8. 1 divided by 1.8 1 is uh, 5 over 9. Well, this is, it's 1 divided by 9 over 5, so it's 5 over 9. Stop me if there's any bits you want me to, like, clarify what's happening. So we get 9 over 5, d minus x. Okay, so we have some interesting things here. We've got time 1 is a third d, time 2 is a ninth d, time 3 is 5 sixths x, and time four is this one. Why have I only highlighted time one and time three, do you think? Because they're both related to A. Good. Time two, which is a ninth D, and time four, which is nine over five D minus X, are both related to B. So actually, the time for B to get here and then for B to get here is the green bits. And the time for A to go here and then for A to go here are the yellow bits. What do we know about the yellow times? Yeah. As soon as the timer is started here, the yellow must be equal to the green. Otherwise, they wouldn't have left at the same time and collided at the same time. So we need to put this together in a final kind of statement together. T1 plus T3 must be equal to T2 plus T4 because the amount of time that A is travelling has to be the same as the amount of time that B is travelling. And that's it. We've done the question. We just need to solve the equation. So let's put it all together. So we get a third D plus 5 over 6X equals a ninth D plus 9 over 5 D minus X. So I'm going to start off by expanding the brackets and then collecting like terms. So that's 9 over 5 D minus 9 over 5 X. I'm feeling calculator lazy. I've got my calculator in here. So we'll put the x's on the left-hand side and then the other bits on the other side. So we'll do 5 sixths plus 9 fifths. Oh dear, 79 over 30 x. And then we've got a ninth d plus 9 fifths d minus a third d. And we get 71 over 45 d. So we think dividing by 1.8 should give you about um, Oh, did we say, did, I, did you say that and then I just told you you were wrong? Yeah. Why didn't you tell me again? Because you said, no, I know, like, oh, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> oh, you guys, this is, I tell you what, you should, I, I'm not getting everything right all the time, okay? What was it, 5 over 6, D minus X? <laughs> you have to remember, on these four session days, like, I've taught session 1, session 2, and session 3, and you get the worst of me. You get the absolute worst. I'm sorry about all this. I was thinking, bloody hell, these are some very unpleasant numbers that we've got here. So it was 5 over 9. Everything else is still correct, though, right? So that should be 5 over 9 d minus x. So we've got 5 over 9 d minus 5 over 9 x. That's going to be a bit more pleasant, right? 5 over 6 plus 5 over 9. 25 over 18? Yeah. Okay. Then we've got a ninth plus 5 ninths minus a third and you get one third D. Yep, six ninths minus a third, yep. So then we're gonna times that by this. So we get that X is six over 25 D. Now coming back to the diagram, if this is six over 25 D, this would be 19 over 25d. So the ratio between wall 1 and Q and wall 2 and Q is 6 over 25d to 
19 over 25d, but you can divide both sides by d and multiply by 25, and we get 6 to 19. Okay? It's the same logic, though, as the previous one, apart from this time you had to set up that it was time 1 plus time 3, and you needed to take the, you needed to do 1 divided by 1.8 better than I did. This method will mesh with the other method that we did. It's all about time logic. Figure out when the timer starts and when the timer is going to end from the beginning of the collision to the end, and just think about what journeys you need to break it down into so that you can make a comparison between them. I think when you look at this question, it feels very, very overwhelming. It's like, where do you even begin? So that's why I quite like the idea of us having um, this sort of set idea of Let's figure out some different times, and then we can make time comparisons for all of them. That's the most, I think, the most sensible sort of approach for this. The previous question was quite simple. Should we go through it quickly? Sure. Yeah. OK, so the one that I also asked you to have a look at for homework was this one, which I think is actually pretty straightforward. It just it's, it sounds a bit different. So we've got a mass of 2 kilograms is moving at 35 meters per second catches up and collides with a mass of 10 kilograms moving in the same direction at 20. Five seconds after the impact, the 10 kilogram mass encounters a fixed barrier which reduces it to rest. So later on, it's going to come over here and it's going to be at rest. MTS, MTS, please come now to the school office. Thank you. Also, Olivia Cable, if you are still in the building, please come to the school office to collect a message. Thank you. Right, OK. So first of all, we need to figure out what happens in this collision. So this is going to be pretty simple. Let's call it x and y. We'll do PCLM. And when you do PCLM, you've got 35 times 2 plus 20 times 10 equals 2x plus 10y. So that's 70 plus 200. 270 is 2x plus 10y. OK? We've also got to do NLR. We haven't even got to the end of the question of reading it yet. But it says, assuming the coefficient is 3 fifths, find the further time that will elapse before the 2 kilogram mass strikes the 10 kilogram mass again. So NLR, speed of separation is what? And the speed of approach? 15. 3 fifths of 15. Oh, it's one of those days. Uh, 9 is equal to y minus x. So I can make 9 plus x is equal to y. Put it in there. So 270 is equal to 2x plus 10 lots of y, which is 9 plus x. So 270 is 2x plus 90 plus 10x. So 180 is 12x. Yep, so x is 15, and y is therefore 24. So we now know, for this scenario that we've got here, that y is 24 and x is 15, and it takes five seconds for it to get over there. So we've got the distance equals the speed times the time, which is 120. And we know that once it gets there, it stops. We want to know how long it will take for this one to get to the wall. So we've got that its distance is 120. Its speed is 15. So time is distance divided by speed which is eight, yeah? Eight seconds. OK. It doesn't ask for the further time after five seconds. Oh. So it will be three seconds, because that's eight seconds after the first collision to there. So it will be three seconds after, after B hits the wall. Elapsed means has passed by. Oh, no, elapsed. If you say that the time has elapsed, it means the time has run out or the time has passed. OK? Right. 